Get in on Stanley Cup Finals action. Lightning versus Avalanche at Sports Interaction, Canada Sportsbook. Bet on the game before it starts, live and in play, or, I don't know, will Nikita Kucherov continue to lead the way for the Lightning? Doing it right since 1997, Sports Interaction makes it easy to deposit, play, and cash out. Join now to see all that sports betting has to offer. Head to sportsinteraction.com slash sdpn. That's sportsinteraction.com slash sdpn. 19 plus, please play responsibly. Okay, so uh, Dodonov traded, but not to the Ducks, although the Ducks social team deserves a big shout out because they wrote back, when when Vegas announced the trade, they just wrote, you sure? Are you sure? Yeah. Uh, uh, Perfect. I I want to, before we get into why this makes sense for both sides, if that's not abundantly obvious, I just want to read out what Shea Weber just posted a few minutes ago on the Montreal Canadiens website. Growing up playing hockey in Canada, it's every kid's dream to play in the NHL. I consider myself extremely fortunate to not only have done that, but have had the chance to go uh, to play for a Canadian team and a member of the original six. Never in my wildest dreams could I have imagined playing, uh, playing, let alone being named captain of the Montreal Canadiens. Pulling on that legendary jersey every night was one of my greatest honors, and it's something I appreciate every chance I got. I want to thank my teammates, coaches, trainers, management, entire organization, Jeff Molson and the Molson family, Montreal media, and most of all, the fans for embracing me and my family for making the city feel like a second home. Montreal will, will always be in my heart. Merci pour tout. Shea Weber. And the trade was one for one, Shea Weber, for uh, Dodonov, right? Yes, it was. It was one for one. Yeah, he's a one for one kind of guy. Now, this is really obviously, but I, I don't know that it's obvious to everybody still. Uh, it's about Shea Weber's contract and health. And, and immediately afterwards, Kent Hughes got on Zoom and started doing his interviews. And he said, listen, I wouldn't have made the deal if Shea was ever going to play again. But he said his, his, his injuries are pretty serious. And I think, I think what gets lost in that context and looking at a comment like that is I don't think Kent Hughes would have ever been able to make a Shea Weber trade if there was any chance Shea Weber was going to play again. There's an... Like, there's no way. He's got one of those old back-diving deals. Remember we were talking about those? Oh, his his contract is monstrous. monstrous. I wonder how many do, years do you, you have me, it uh, You want me to read it off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got Shea Weber signed this contract on July 24th, 2012. Uh, Mr. David Poyle signed it. It is four- uh, uh, Mr. David Poyle matched it. Matt, it was an off. So right. the interesting thing about this contract, I think we touched on it last episode, was that it's an offer seat matching by the Philadelphia, the Philadelphia Flyers. Flyers because they were trying to steal uh, Shea Weber and they were like, Nashville has doesn't have the money. They can't afford this. And David Poyle's like, fuck you. I'm going to do this. So he matched <laughs> sure the contract. Did. It's 14 years, $110 million. 7.857143 against the cap every single year for those 14 years. The money paid out for the first four years is $13 million. The uh, next two years Eight million dollars. This is the signing bonus that he gets on July first. So the first four years, well, he has these are just the dollars. signing bonus, just, just the, the signing, signing bonuses. bonuses. And then he was making league men throughout the year. And then yeah, his base salary throughout the year was a million through most of it, and then jumps to four, then jumps to six, and right now it's at three. But the signing bonus after five years is zero dollars. He no longer gets the signing bonus for the back half of the eight years of the fourteen years, and then his uh, but his total salary right now is a million dollars base and then that's it so for the last three years of this deal or last four years he's gonna make three million dollars this year and then last three years he makes a million a million a million wow you know yeah it so they got rid of this in 2013 in retrospect how didn't they see this as a potential problem when they originally sorry the the shea weber deal was in 2013 I think it was 15. 2012, this deal was like No, no, no. You mean the trade to Montreal, right? Oh, my. No, 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 no. no. So what, what I'm talking about is in 2013, after the lockout. Oh, they, they got rid got, of this type of deal. Yeah, Sorry. they got rid of this type of deal. Apologies. But when they came up with the salary cap in 2005, how didn't they see this as a potential problem? That Shea Weber has been a double-digit salary player for half of this deal or whatever, close to it. With a seven point eight million dollar cap hit, this contract is a crock of shit. Mm-hmm. Although, if you're him, I sign that immediately. All right, of course. If somebody puts that in front of me. I don't care what they team never it is. thought Signing. about. Hey, you can structure the actual payout of the money differently. They said, like, okay, 
here you you sign this thing against the cap. It's got to be even against the cap at all the years. But they never thought like, hey, the GMs are going to get creative with the bonuses and the payouts. I I get how you don't think about that, but the GMs are very smart. I, you people. have to understand too how that in an after how, how these yeah, deals like, come together. Is that is that you know they're under an immense amount of stress to get these labor relation deals done, right? Mm-hmm. And I think you don't have time once you're closing in on a deal to think about well. <laughs> okay, let's galaxy brain the next five years of every loophole they're going to find. Let's bring Lou Lamorello and Brandon Brinham in. Ah! And, and it's not a loophole. How the fuck dare you? We'll get to that. We'll get to I'm that. I'm going to beat your ass. That's a Gary Bettman thing. We'll, right. we'll talk about On that. On behalf of Gary yeah. Bettman, I'm uh, going to beat your ass. During, during ne- tough negotiations when you're doing the CBA, they're not thinking about Brandon Pridham. Right. Who's sitting there <laughs> with, his, with his calculator, because that's how he who's, does this. sitting there with the his internet. calculator. Coming up with the CBA. You're right. Coming yes. up with the CBA and also coming up with the ways to get creative with the money. You know, they're not thinking about They're just trying to get a deal done so that they can get hockey back on the ice. Right. Would I use the word circumvent? I sure wouldn't. But you might have with Shea Weber. And that's how the NHL sort of saw those contracts. Um, now, the, the Montreal Canadiens obviously did not want to play with that much dead cap on their team uh, going into next season. And it's understandable why, because, you know, the Canadian teams, frankly, were hit much harder by the pandemic. We, we didn't get fans back in seats uh, and, and ratings actually fell off a little bit, too. Right. It, yeah. Now, now that, those those numbers are somewhat um, stable because Sportsnet pays an amount each year as a part of their contract to the NHL. But, you know, when you oh. have let's say you've got advertisers in the stadium and you promise X amount of people are going to see this ad and all of a sudden people aren't in the stadium and you might catch a glance of it on TV, the prices change. And for, uh, uh, you know, a, a city like Montreal, that's going to matter, right? So mm-hmm. you, you don't want to have $20 million in cap, dead cap space. I get it. And Dodonov makes a lot of sense for them because Montreal really couldn't score until Marty St. Louis showed up last year. And even then they weren't that great at it. And he's good for 20 goals. Oh, yeah. He had, uh, I saw a stat today, he had 16 points in 16 games after the failed trade. <laughs> He's a point of game player. This might be a great trade for them. This might be a fit. He's got one year left at $5 million. There's nothing, there's no downside in Montreal. For You're this. trading somebody who's never going to play again for a player. Perfect trade. Yeah. Yeah, and UFA. Per- perfectly normal and common in the National Hockey League. Yeah. <laughs> a very good league with so no loopholes whatsoever. I would love to see in the next CBA that if you cannot play the game of hockey at the National Hockey League, you no longer have to be against the cap. You no longer can be traded. You no longer count. You're just, you're done. People are going to abuse that worse than they're abusing it now. I have a question. If you're retired, everything should be gone. Yeah, I agree. Like, you still get your money. Yeah. But the team doesn't Let, get punished. Yeah. The, you still have to pay out the money. You still have to pay out the contract, but the, the guy's gone. And, and you, you know what's good about traded. that? You can't have any bullshit trades like the Ben Bishop one to meet the salary floor. Yep. You have to, please make billionaires spend their money. Shout out to Kevin Weeks for calling that trade what it was. Ben Bishop was not traded to the Buffalo Sabres. Ben Bishop's contract. Ben Bishop's contract. Yeah, yeah. Was wasn't, it, wasn't Chris Sabres. Pronger a Coyote? It wasn't Pavel Datsyuk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like it's it's just, we should get rid of these contracts that are being swapped for guys that no longer play game of hockey. Why are they still counted against the league? I agree. Well, the thing is, is that technically they haven't retired. And that's what the, that's what the lawyers would tell you. Fart. Fix that. Fix that wording. Fart. Like, what, what if you what, called for it, what? For the purpose of what? what? if you called There's it? No for, so we're not holding up these teams like Arizona. What if you called they it? What if there was a different distinction? You called it something like permanent injury status, yeah. which is you're not going to retire. You're going to get the rest of your contract, but you're never coming back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Piss. Permanent injury status. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, you got to. Uh. I like it. I like it. Permanent no, injury. Hey, don't don't status, leave them. Don't sir. leave them hanging. Don't leave them hanging. Oh, I didn't see. <laughs> don't make a. I didn't see. Robert and Jamie, that one's for you. That's right. <laughs> oh, that was worse. <laughs> it was worse. Do you have cap friendly tweets in front of you? I want to die right now. Oh, that's that's not even a top five most embarrassing thing to happen to me this week. <laughs> All right, let's pull cap friendly regarding Shea Weber. Yes, What's, I have them right in front of me. Oh, well, then get, oh, them, right get them in front of me. <laughs> Cap friendly is beautiful. <laughs> what are they saying? Adam, can you get that thing? I already have it. Yeah. <laughs> you, you get it Wait, first. Ha- oh, no, no, no. no, no. Just I ahead. thought you were going to say it. Fuck! I'm, can you pass me my laptop? to the show? Can you pass me my laptop that's in front of me? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Stephen. Take it. Cap friendly. 
Why'd Montreal make this trade? No club wants to use LTIR, which is an interesting distinction. We all think teams want want to. They want to have this ability to spend over the cap. A lot of teams don't. Why did Montreal make this trade? No club wants to use LTIR. It's restrictive to roster construction. Mm -hmm. No pro rating, so recalls cost more cap space and makes an overage penalty significantly more likely. This trade enables the possibility of this Habs or of the Habs operating without LTI this season. So for example, they're about to pick first overall. Mm -hmm. The first overall is going to have bonuses. If they hit their bonuses, their contract is going to go from something like uh, 950,000 to potentially as high as close to 4 million. Wow. Right? That's what happened with Matthews. Why did Vegas make this trade? For LTI teams, trading a healthy player for an LTIR contract is money in slash money out, Mm -hmm. where the team effectively creates cap space equal to the amount of healthy player or amount of the healthy player. Vegas made 5 million in cap space. Past example, the Tampa and Chicago Tyler Johnson for Brent Seabrook trade. Now they have to do this for a lot more, a lot, a lot of years. Like that Shea Weber contract doesn't end anytime soon. Well, I don't and think that, Vegas... And, and the cap hit, no matter what they're paying him, that cap hit remains the same. Vegas plans on doing this for a number of years. I guess We're going to have to. up against the cap, so we don't have to worry about it. We're probably not going to have any top five picks that are going <laughs> to have Bowden bonus-laden deals. And if we did, we'd trade him anyway? Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, they kept players on LTIR. For longer than they needed to this season, probably, so that they could uh, work with the roster they have. So I'm missing how this isn't a loophole. So that <laughs> let, that brings us to the uh, the Gary Bettman press conference, and you're talking, I think, specifically about a, was that not a Dun- Mike Stevens? Good, it Duncan was Keith that we're talking about now. Duncan Keith. Well, <laughs> the so loophole. The, so the Mike Stevens question, Mikey Mikey Stevens, eighty one. Uh, you should follow him. He, he seems to be. He asked Gary that question. Gary was super pissed at him. It seemed, you know and what? then Mikey went on and watched a baseball game at Coors Field. Dude, uh, <laughs> he's. I, I got to give him a shout out. He's he's a young guy, uh, like mid twenties. He's at his first Stanley Cup final. And he asked Gary Bettman the question that made him the most uncomfortable. What, what was the? I didn't see any of this. What was the question? Ask the question. Well, he's basically talking about um, Tampa is in their third straight final, and they've been using loopholes um, basically this whole time. Like, what does it say about the league? Now, that's me paraphrasing. I don't remember the exact okay. wording of the question. Now, when I retweeted it and said this was awesome, Tampa fans got defensive. I want to be clear. The Tampa Bay Lightning have done nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. And that's exactly what Gary Bettman said. Vegas has done nothing. Yeah, but he said it with a bit more full of shit. Um, Tampa's done nothing wrong. Vegas has done nothing wrong. Uh, The Habs have spent over the cap. The Islanders have spent over the cap. The Leafs have spent over the cap. Lots of teams have spent over the cap using this. Remember Nathan Horton? What number did he wear for the Leafs? Right. It was a leaf for a long time, or at least he was on the books for a long time. It's not that they've done anything wrong. They've followed the rules. The problem, and I thought I was clear in this, the problem is not Tampa or Vegas violating the rules. The problem is the rules being hunk of shit rules. Mm. It allows the rich teams to continue doing this. It allows the broke teams to continue being broke ass. Like, Ve- uh, not Vegas, sorry, Arizona has had the most ghosts play for them in NHL history. I think we're all surprised they didn't make this trade. Can I read what Batman? I found yes, a tweet. Yes, please. So, uh, Taylor uh, Haas quoted his answer. All right, so Batman says, Batman on Tampa's use of LTIR, I don't think they've been using loopholes. They've been using the agreement as it's been drafted. They're not using loopholes. They're using effective cap management. Everyone's operating under the same agreement. And then you said uh, on your Twitter, a masterclass in using the truth dishonestly. Yeah, which I don't take back at all. That's, That's, yes, they didn't violate any rules, Gary. 
Thank you, Mr. Lawyer Man. They didn't violate any rules. Here, Jesse, read my other tweet since you got it. Up. I can I can read it. So so you were responding to somebody who uh, was critical of you saying that Tampa's using a loophole. You said nothing Tampa does with the cap is wrong. They're using the cap under the rules. But you wrote in caps, are the rules silly? That depends. The cap is designed to keep salaries down and keep teams spending similar money. But the teams that can afford it routinely spend over, well over. So does it work? So Vegas is going to be spending over. And Tampa is currently spending over. Which was the whole point of the thing. Tampa. So this all, all everything I type pertains to Tampa. Because the question was about Tampa. 24 hours later, after Gary Bettman says there's no loopholes, a player who's never going to play again gets traded. All right. For cap relief! <laughs> 